Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel all about VLSI. In this video, we are going to discuss about one more module which is known as UART receiver module. Let us try to develop the Verilog code for our UART receiver module. In our previous videos, we have discussed about Verilog code development of board rate, board rate generator module and transmitter module. And in this video, we are going to discuss about UART receiver module. So in this UART receiver module, let us try to have, uh, first of all, let us try to First of all, let us try to uh, see the block diagram of UART receiver module. So this is my UART receiver UART receiver block diagram where it is going to have the signals like clock, which is a reference clock, and it is going to have a reset signal and ready underscore clear signal. Basically, it is going to make this clear signal to zero. Basically, it is going to make this ready signal to zero and uh, clock enable signal. This clock enable signal, we are getting it from the baud rate generator module. If you remember, we were discussing about the baud rate generator module where the baud rate generator module was uh, giving the TX underscore enable and RX underscore enable signals. So the receiver enable signal is given by the baud rate generator and this is nothing but our clock enable signal which is given by our baud rate generator module. And we also have our outputs as ready. and one more output as data out and we have one more input which is nothing but rx this is our serial input this is our serial input which we are getting it from the uart transmitter and this is our parallel output which is of 8 bits width this this is our parallel output which we are getting it from the receiver okay so this is our rx okay now, in this receiver model, we are going to have few states. Let us see the uh, state diagram of this receiver model. So we have basically few states. One is start state and from this start state and we also have one more state which is known as data out state and one more state is known as stop state. So these are the states which I am going to have start state, data out state and stop state. Basically in the start state, sampling of the data will be uh, happening and in the data out state, so basically in the start state, uh, after receiving the start bit, we are going to the data out state and in the data out state, the sampling of the data will be happening and in the stop state, the sampling of the data will be completed. The, this is our states. Okay. Now, when are we going to data out state? What should be the condition? And when we are going from data out state to stop state, what is the condition that and all we will discuss now. Okay. Now in our code, what are we going to do is uh, we are going to have, we are going to declare a signal, which is known as sample. This sample signal is of four bits width. And we also have one more signal, which is known as index. This is of eight bits width. This is of uh, four bits width. And we also have one more signal, which is temp, which is of eight bits width for storing our data, for storing our data, which the transmitter has sent to us. Okay. And now let us see what, what are we doing actually in this particular module. Now, let me draw the reference clock. So this is my reference clock. And in the baud rate generator module, when we were discussing about baud rate generator module, we have seen that for every 10,000 cycles, our transmitter enable signal was made to one. And after that, again, it is made to zero and it is only one for only one cycle and it is made to zero. And that is nothing but it is for every 10,000 cycles, it was made to zero. Uh, it is made to one so that we can achieve a baud rate of 9,600. If you haven't watched that particular video, I recommend you to please rewatch that particular video of baud rate generator logic design where we have discussed that particular thing. Okay. Now for ease of explanation, what I'm going to do is for every 16 cycles, I am going to make my uh, baud rate generate uh, TX underscore enable signal to one. Okay. For every 16 cycles, I'm going to make my TX underscore enable to one. Okay. So this is, let's say our TX underscore enable signal is becoming one here. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Again, here it is becoming one again. Here it is becoming one. And again, it is becoming zero here. Okay. For ease of explanation, I'm taking this. Okay. Now our TX underscore enable is becoming one in the first cycle. And again, it is becoming one in the after 16 cycles. Okay. Now, and coming to our RX underscore enable signal, which was generated by our baud rate generator module and coming to this 
coming to that rx underscore enable signal that particular signal is made to one uh, after 524 cycles that is it is having a oversampling factor of 16 if you remember in our boundary generator model where we were discussing okay so here also let us assume that our rx underscore enable signal is becoming one somewhere here and let's say uh, our baud rate generator module, uh, this rx underscore enable signal, this is our tx underscore enable signal and this is our rx underscore enable signal. This rx underscore enable signal, let's say it is becoming high for every four cycles. Okay. So this is first cycle, second, one, two, three, four. Again, it is becoming one here and becoming zero and one, two, three, four. Again, it is becoming one here and again zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, it is becoming 1 again. You can see here, and this is my Rx underscore enable signal and this is my Tx underscore enable signal. Okay. And we already have seen in our transmitter module that whenever your Tx underscore enable signal is made to 1, then only you are going to change your data or you, then only you are going to change your bit. Okay. Now, let's say we have already, uh, let's say if we are enabling our tx underscore enable signal we are uh, making our start bit to zero and we are not changing that particular bit it is being constant or let's say it is our data bit let's say it is our data okay after that we are sending our stop bit like this so before that we have sent our start bit okay so you can see the data bit is sent and whenever again we have tx underscore enable signal we are sending stop okay so this is how we are going to uh, send our data. Okay. Now, and here also we will, this is only one bit of data. This is only one bit. So in the next cycle, again, we will send the second bit. So total eight bits, right? So this is second bit of data and so on. After sending eight bits of data serially, then only we are making our stop bit is equal to one. Okay. So for this many cycles, we are only sending one bit of data. And for this many cycles, we are only sending second bit of data like this. Okay. Serially one by one one by one bit we are sending our data items okay and if you can see the rx underscore enable signal it is made to one for four number of times it is made to one for the four number uh, it is made to one for four number of times you can see here okay and here rx underscore enable signal is basically having a oversampling factor that is it is oversampling the bits for multiple number of times we are basically sampling the data in the receiver side for and uh, more number of times so that we might not lose the data. Okay, that is our intention of making this Rx underscore enable signal, having this Rx underscore, uh, including the oversampling factor in the uh, Rx underscore enable logic. Okay, now, now in our receiver logic, what are we going to do is we are going to have our, going to have our uh, sample signal. We are going to have this sample signal. And this sample signal is four bits when we are taking the baud rate of 9600 and uh, uh, making our TX underscore enable high for every 10,000 cycles. That is a four bits sample is equal to four bits we are taking. Okay, I will explain the reason. But uh, here, let us take our sample as uh, a two bit signal. Okay, so that sample will be incremented. Uh, that is, it will be zero. And whenever our RX underscore enable is made to one, it will become from zero to one and it will remain constant. And again, it will become two whenever our Rx underscore enable signal is made to one, it is becoming two and it is being constant. And again, it is going to become three like this is it is becoming. Okay. And so we can see here, this is our sample signal. This is our sample signal, which is becoming one, two and three. Why are we using this sample signal? Because we need to sample the data which is exactly in between so we need to sample the data exactly in between the data that is this portion of data i want to sample this particular portion of data i want to sample i don't want to uh, if i uh, sample the data at the edges then there may be a chances of getting a wrong information or incorrect data okay so exactly if i sample the data in between then i might get the data accurately okay so that's why i'm going to take the sample signal and I'm going to sample the data exactly in between. Whenever my sample is equal to two, I'm going to sample my data. Exactly the same logic I'm going to apply in the main code also. That is, I have an oversampling factor of 16. Then I'm taking this sample variable and whenever my sample is equal to eight, I'm going to sample my data. 
I'm going to sample the data. This is my objective. So sample this variable is going to count from 0 to 16 and whenever it is going to reach 8, I am going to sample the data. That is this exactly middle portion I am going to sample. This is my uh, aim. So this is my aim. This is what I am going to implement in my code. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So let us see what we are going to do in our code. From the start state, we are going to a state which is known as data out state whenever our Rx is equal to 0. So from the start state, we are going to data out state whenever our Rx is equal to 0. That means your start bit is made to 0. That means master want to send the data. Okay. Or your sample is not equal to 0. Or your sample is not equal to 0. In this two states, we are going to a state. Now from the start state, we are going to a state which is known as data out state. Whenever our sample signal has reached the count of 15. Okay. So I have told you already. So this particular Rx signal is having a oversampling factor of 16. So that's why for, uh, so whenever our Tx signal becomes one and becomes zero and next it is becoming one here, our Rx underscore enable signal will become one for total 16 number of times because we are having a sampling factor of 16. Okay. And for every Rx underscore enable assertion, our sample signal will be incremented. Sample will be equal to one. And again, sample will be equal to two. So on, it will be 60. So on, it will be equal to 15. So this count I'm making. So here, whenever my Tx underscore enable signal is made to one, I'm going to send a start bit. So the start bit will be available during this whole period my sample, my start bit will be equal to zero during this whole period. Okay. So that's why whenever my sample is becoming 15, then only I'm going to sample my data. Okay. So that's why I'm going to stay in the start state. That's why I'm going to stay in the start state until my sample becomes 15, until my sample becomes 15. If my sample become 15, then that means I have reached another, and then I, um, if my sample becomes 15, then I can confirm that another data is being sent. That is the actual data has been sent. Okay. And again, actual data will be available for next uh, uh, particular cycles. Okay. So this is how I'm going to sample the data. Okay. So what I'm doing here, my sample, if it is equal to 15, then I'm going to a state, which is known as data out state. From the data out state, what I'm going to do is I'm going to a state, which is known as stop state. Whenever my sample value is again 15, and index value has reached 8. So these two conditions I am checking and after that I am going to reach a state which is known as stop state and in the stop state what I am going to do is and from the stop state to start state I am going whenever my sample is equal to 15. So this is how I am going to implement my receiver module. So that's about this particular video where we have discussed about the actual designing process what we are going to do and in our next video we are going to start developing with our very low code yes so that's all about this video if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel all about vlsi and if you have any doubts or any queries please feel free to comment me in the comment section